Take us to the story of how you told Coach Cal that you're going to become a Wildcat and what his reaction was. Yeah, we actually drove up to to campus. You know, it's just a like an hour, hour 15 away from the house. So mm-hmm. we just texted him one day and asked him if he was going to be in the uh, in his office that we were just going to stop by. We were up in Lexington for a day or something, but we were just going up to tell him. I wanted to tell him in person. Mm-hmm. Um, so we walked in the office and, you know, he just asked me what I was doing here. And and that's when I told him, I was like, coach, I want to play for you. I want to be a Kentucky Wildcat. And he just kind of sat there for a little bit and then he jumped up and started screaming and said, come here, give me a hug. What's going on today? I'm the host, Shoes, and joining me today is Naismith High School underclassman watch list selection from this past season, the number one ranked player in the state of Kentucky, a five-star recruit, the number 17 ranked player in the class of 2023, according to Rivals Top 100, two-time All-State selection in the state of Kentucky, and the number 49 ranked commit in Kentucky history, Reed Shepard. Reed, I appreciate taking time to come on today, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Well, we've got a lot to get into today, but I want to start off with one aspect. And I know NIL has been in effect now, and you obviously have been doing some action by yourself now. You've been a part of different certain commercials, read between the lines. Can you take us through that a little bit? Like, how did that come to be? And, and just what it's like being a part of that? Yeah. Uh, you know, Dr. White has just always been a good uh, friend, a family friend of ours for like my whole life. Mm. Um, so being able to do that with him was a, was a blessing, really being able to uh get get first started that was kind of their their first time getting started with nil so being able to do that with them uh and of course knowing them and um being in their offices a lot growing up uh like with the teeth and stuff uh you know it was it was fun being able to do that with them and i was blessed to be a part of it so that was i'm guessing your first chance to kind of get into acting and stuff and stuff like that so is that something you enjoy at all is that something we could see you do later on in the future too now uh, yeah, it was fun. You know, it was different. Um, I never done anything like that before, so it was different, but it was for sure fun. Well, I want to get into your story because we know now that you are committed to Kentucky. You're a great player. You're a five-star recruit, but I want people to get to know how you've become the reach shepherd that we know you as today. So if we head back, you originally grew up in where you're still at today and we're going to play college at is out there in Kentucky. What's it been like growing up out there? Uh, you know, I've had a good childhood. Uh, you know, I got both my parents have always been with me and, uh, I got a really big family, uh, around us where we live. We all live in the same area. Mm -hmm. So growing up, you know, I've always had a big family around me, supporting me. Um, I've been, always been playing all kinds of sports, going to school, going to church, having fun outside with my friends and, uh, hanging out with my family and stuff. So just doing all of it when I was a kid and growing up and then finally uh, basketball just taking over around fifth or sixth grade and finally locking in on basketball and just focusing on it. Obviously people know that your parents have played incredible careers in terms of basketball. So was basketball something that was just kind of brought into you? I know you guys are now obviously even closer because of basketball, but was that something that they kind of said, okay, here's your sport. Do you fall in love with it now? Did they kind of have you play a lot of sports growing up or what kind of brought you to eventually fall in love with the game of basketball? Uh, no, they were, they let me play whatever I wanted to play. You know, they weren't, uh, as soon as I could talk and everything and walk, they weren't like, here's a basketball. You have to play basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I played every sport playing, uh, growing up like soccer, baseball, football, basketball. So there wasn't many sports that I didn't play. Um, and then, you know, I just, when I got a little bit older and realized, uh, what I was the best at and what I felt like I had the most fun with it ended up being basketball and that's what we just stuck with. And I think it's worked out pretty good for me. I have to imagine that they were a little excited though to know that their son was going to play basketball now that <laughs> it could kind of help you too a little bit. So how big has that been? Because there's not too many people that get to have both parents play at a high level of basketball. We obviously dad want to play professionally. Both parents have historic careers at Kentucky. What has it been like just knowing that you have endless information, endless resources because of them that kind of help you throughout this journey? Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, I don't think a lot of people have that opportunity to get that from their parents, like you said. But growing up, always having them talking to me about it and dealing with 
dealing with things that not a lot of people can say their parents have dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I was able to ask them questions um, through all the process of the recruiting and the just growing up and living life and just having fun with it. And they, they had been through it all and were able to talk to me about it and they didn't do it in a biased way. They just answered the question, how it needed to be answered. And uh, I appreciate that from them. And uh, I have their all, their full support no matter what I do. So that, that means a lot to me and having them by my side is the best thing I could ask for. If you had to pick one memory or one lesson that they've kind of given you, something that you'd say has helped you as a person on or off the court, what's the biggest lesson you learned from your mom? What's the biggest lesson that you learned from your dad? Um, I would say for both of them, really just, just being how, just being yourself, you know, don't, don't go out and uh, play basketball and try to be a jerk or something. And then after the game, try to be all nice. Just like, just be yourself the whole game, the whole, your whole life. Just people like you for who you are. Don't, don't change anything about yourself just to try to get people to like you. Um, just be you and be uh, nice and be respectful to everyone. Mind your manners. And just a lot of stuff that's outside of basketball uh, is what I'm most thankful for that they, they taught me. Whenever I've had players on that have parents that have played collegiately or in the professional ranks, they always talk about playing the games against them one-on-one, king of the court, whatever that is. I know for some parents, they obviously decide to say, you know, I'm not going to lose my son at any point. I'm just going to let him play. I'm never going to get involved in those. Did your parents ever get involved? Did you ever get to play any of them on one-on-one? Yeah, we played a little bit. Um, you know, we kind of did mainly some like shooting games and, mm. and that type of stuff. We didn't play much, um, just straight one-on-one. But uh, when we did play, they didn't hold anything back. They they didn't let me win by no means. They always they always would give it their all and try to beat me. And most of the time they did beat me, but it's okay. Did you ever get any wins on your dad or your mom? Uh, I have in the last couple of years when we play, but when I was younger, I, there wasn't many times that I that I got a win. So when would you say the very first time was, and what was that game like? Um, it was me and my dad were outside, uh, shooting on the outdoor goal and it was probably a couple of years ago and we were just doing this full court shooting game and, uh, he finally getting a little old so I can fucking out shoot him now. Uh, but we were just playing a little game of just running up and down and shooting threes. And, uh, I don't remember how exactly we were counting them and all that stuff, but, uh, I remember that day and it was it was it was cool to me finally being able to beat them when you've gone throughout this process now rather beat the elementary school and middle school and a high school career knowing that your parents kind of have brought attention on you obviously people look at the last name shepherd you're in kentucky they know who they are and kind of who your parents are did that ever put any sense of pressure on you did it ever kind of give you attention that was kind of hard for you growing up or how did you deal with that uh i mean it did but you know, when I was a little younger, I didn't realize. I really didn't realize who, who my parents were. Like I didn't know that because that's that's something they didn't just come out to me and just they didn't just talk about it and brag about anything. Um, so you know, I kind of just learned as I got older, like some of the stuff that accomplishments that they did and how like rare that was to do some of the stuff that they have done. Um, but as I got older, you know. Uh, I started hearing everything with my phone and seeing everything and people coming up to me. And that pressure was, it got to me a little bit, but, um, you know, you, like I said earlier, you just gotta, just gotta be yourself and go out and just have fun and try not to worry about all that and just block it out and just go be yourself. You said it was around fifth or sixth grade that you started to really fall in love with basketball and said, this is the sports you want to go forward with. What was it about it then? Like, what was it about basketball? You said, you know, this is the sport that I see myself having the best future in. Uh, just having fun with it, you know. Mm. It was one of the sports that I could play all day. Like, I wanted to be in the gym all the time. Mm-hmm. Some of the other sports that I played, I got a little tired of them towards the end of uh, my playing time playing in them. But with basketball, you know, it, I never got tired of it. Always wanted to be in the gym. Always wanted to go and play and shoot with dad and shoot with mom or or go to a gym or something. And, and then I realized that that's what I had the most fun with. And also um, I felt like I was the best and had the best opportunity to keep growing my game and getting better. Then going forward on that aspect, then when would you say it started clicking for yourself that you realized 
I'm not just something I love the sport anymore. Obviously you still do, but this is now a sport that you truly see yourself and you believe that you have a future in that. This is something you could play past high school. You play collegially, maybe even professionally. When did that start setting in for yourself? And when did you at least start to believe that? Um, I would say around eighth grade, you know, I, I went to, I played on a high school level uh, my eighth grade year and that really playing against those older dudes really kind of boosted my confidence a lot, knowing that I was up there as a younger player and, could still play with those high school dudes. And then at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm, I like it more. I'm having more fun with it. Um, and I'm getting better. So from about eighth grade to now has really been, uh, at the time where I've really worked at it the most and have, uh, thought to myself about that, like that I can play at a higher level than, than just high school basketball. Um, so I would say around eighth grade, eighth, ninth grade. I also want to get a little bit into Kentucky basketball as a whole, because obviously when you talk about the top states in the country, it's not necessarily up there with like a Texas or California, whatever it might be. But there has been some really solid players starting to come out of there. When you talk about 2023 class, obviously you've got yourself, you got Caleb, who obviously transferred out now, but he's still from there. You got Gabe out there. Like you've got some guys that have started to make a lot, lot bigger spotlight now on Kentucky basketball you being a part of this new generation of there, what's it like being a part of them? What's it like kind of seeing the growth of Kentucky basketball in the past four or five years now? Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. You know, growing up, of course, we've all played against each other as little kids. Yeah. Um, so now seeing each other do well in high school and go, be able to go to different colleges is really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've all had uh, have made relationships with each other, so it's pretty cool. And some of us have even played together on AAU or some have played together on high school and finally being able to see us all growing up and uh, getting the attention that we deserve is, is a pretty cool part of it. And uh, it's really neat being able to uh, watch your friends and some of your teammates and people that you've played against grow up and get the, get some college offers and be able to go play college ball. Who would you say has been your favorite guy to match up against? Has there someone been throughout your high school career or just growing up, like you said, who has been your favorite player in the state of Kentucky to go match up against? Mm. Mm, in Kentucky. I don't really know. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really good guards that uh, are in Kentucky that can play at a high level and that are always a good game. Uh, you know, it goes going back and forth with them on the court. Um, but I think Kentucky has some really good high school players and some good college players. And being able to play against all of them really has been a really cool part of this journey. And uh, it's been really fun. One guy I do want to go a little bit deeper on is Caleb. And I had him on a few months ago after he committed to Louisville. But you talk about your two relationship. I know you guys have known each other for a while. What's it like seeing that the way that you two have both grown into becoming top ranked players in the country have now got offers. Now both are going to high major schools, both schools, which are kind of your guys' dream schools growing up too, in a way. What's it like seeing the way you guys have both lived out your guys' dreams now? Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. You know, me and, like you said, me and Caleb have played against each other forever. Mm-hmm. And then there was a year we played together AAU and we got really close that year. And that was a really fun experience being able to play with, uh, play with him. And I'm, really excited for him to be able to go to his hometown and and I think he'll he's going to put on for the city for sure and um hopefully we'll be able to play against each other I had a mom when before you obviously commit at that point in time and he was trying to recruit you to Louisville at that time were you guys ever seriously considering teaming up at the collegiate level rather than at Louisville somewhere else or how close did that ever get between you two yeah I mean we talked about it a little bit um mm-hmm. you know we both uh were didn't have our minds made up yet. So that was obviously a, a, um, a part of it that mm-hmm. made us both look at going to a school together just because we played with each other and known each other from around the same area and uh, get along pretty well. So that would have been a, that would have been a cool experience for sure. But we did, we talked about it a little bit. As you said, though, you guys are now going to be pretty much rivals, one of the biggest rivals in college basketball. So if you guys do get that match against each other, what would that game be like? Uh, I think it would be a really fun game. I don't think during the game we would be we would be cutting up and laughing at all. <laughs> but I think after the game, uh, we would text each other and uh, go see each other after the game and just cut up a little bit. 
Well, I want to go into your high school career. And you mentioned that it didn't start necessarily in high school. You were in eighth grade when it began. But before we talk about the actual games you started playing, if someone would have came and told you heading into your eighth grade year or even freshman year that in just two or three years, you're going to be a guy that is a five-star recruit, one of the 20 best, best players in the entire country. You're going to be a player that gets offers from pretty much any school in the country. Would that have been something that shocked you? Is that what you expected for yourself? Like, how would you kind of process that if someone told you that? Uh, you know, I think it would have shocked me a little bit. You know, that's something that you always work for and something that I've always wanted um, my whole life once I started just sticking to basketball. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I think it still would have shocked me just because I was so young and I didn't know I didn't know what the future was going to hold or, or anything like that. So I think it would have shocked me for sure. But it's something that I would have been really excited about and excited to be a part and work for it. How did you get the opportunity to play as an eighth grader at the high school level? Because that's not something that too many players get to do. How were you able to get the opportunity and just have that come to be? Uh, you know, I just started off with playing. Uh, well, I would use I used to go to the pickup, the pickup games with mm-hmm. the high schoolers as like going into my eighth grade year. And then uh, the coaches just asked me to play summer ball with them. And I played summer ball with them. And then after that, it kind of just was just part of it. I just was – they asked me to play up, and we talked with the middle school and, and all that, and we thought the best decision for me was to go up on and uh, play at the varsity level and try to just get as much experience as I could. Was North Laurel High, was that the school that was districted for yourself or the school you just chose and wanted to go play there, or what brought you to that high school? Yeah, uh, we live about five minutes from the school. Uh, mm-hmm. My sister went there. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of where where we ended up, and I'm glad I ended up there and wouldn't want to be at anywhere else. Let's hop into that eighth grade season then. So you are playing at a high school level. You're at least one year younger than everybody else, if not three or four years younger. What was that experience like to play up that many years? What was that experience like for yourself? Uh, it was a really fun experience, you know, I, I wasn't expecting – I really didn't know what all was, was going to happen that year. I didn't know if I was going to play a lot. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if I was going to like it, like being up there against the older dudes. I didn't know how my body was going to handle it. Um, I didn't know if I was good enough to go up there and play and make a difference in the games. Um, and then when I finally went up there and was able to start some games and, and make a, a pretty good impact in all of the games – you know, it was a really fun experience, and I had some good uh, older players around me that kind of took me under their wing just because I was so, such a – at a younger age and my uh, – like my mental mm-hmm. state of the game was a lot uh, slower and younger than everyone else, so I didn't get everything. I didn't – I got mad easy and mm-hmm. and just stuff like that. They were there to take uh, control of me, so it was, it was a very fun experience, and it uh, – opened a lot up for me for sure how big was that for your career in terms of development wise knowing that you got that under your belt going to high school then you already had a whole year underneath your belt then how big was that for yourself not just that freshman year but now in the past couple years too yeah I mean it was huge uh going in I was able to know what I needed to do for my body uh like strength wise weight wise and uh and it helped also with the speed of the game going into my freshman year Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing that I needed to go and grow up a little bit and get a little meat on my bones and uh, learn how to play at a faster pace. And then also just all the stuff with basketball, just keep working at it and becoming a, a leader and that type of stuff. You have become a really solid all-around player. We know that you're capable of facilitating. You're a solid defensive player as well. But the thing that I think most people know you as is a spucket. You're able to go out there and score at will. Has that always been a part of your game? Did that develop at a certain point in the past couple of years? Or when did you really start getting that ability to go out on a core and pretty much score it well? Uh, you know, it's kind of just came along with with always going to the gym and shooting with dad or shooting with mom and just working on it over and over and over again. Um, you know, I think that's something that you got to do is just go out and just keep working on it no matter what. And You can't think that you can just go shoot a basketball once a week and become a good shooter. I think you got to you got to go in and work at it and just keep working and keep working and eventually, and I'm still not there yet, but you just become a great shooter and, and you just go out and you can score when you want and you just got to keep working at it. 
Is there a time that maybe it clicked for yourself that you felt like all of a sudden every game you went on the court, you kind of felt like, you know, I'm capable of at least getting 25 points. Like I know that this is the expectation for myself. I know I can at least hit this point. When would you say that started happening for yourself? Uh, I would say like freshman, sophomore season. Mm -hmm. uh, after I, I think I averaged around like 16 my eighth grade year. So going into it, I was like, okay, I can, I can play with these guys. Um, and I needed to score for, for my team to win. And so I just had to keep working and keep going out and, uh, not shooting bad shots, but shooting good shots and getting my teammates open. And, and then of course my teammates helped me a lot, getting me, me open shots and trusting me with the ball in my hands. So that freshman season, then you're officially are in high school. Now you guys go 21 and 10, a really solid overall season for you guys. What was that first year in high school officially like now for yourself? Yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was a awesome experience. You know, that's what you want to do. Uh, when you're in high school, you want to play for your high school and your friends come to watch uh, your teachers come and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a really cool experience for sure. Having all my buddies there to watch and the teachers and your classmates and, and all that. So it was really cool being there and then finally being able to play for the school that you actually go to. By the end of that season, then the thing that shakes up the whole world now was COVID and that comes into play. And it obviously impacted like guys in 2022, a little bit more recruiting wise, but you guys still lost a summer of being able to play AU basketball, still lost a lot of different things because of COVID. How did that impact you? And how did you ultimately get through the COVID pandemic off season? Yeah. I mean, it was a big thing for sure going into it. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't know what to expect. Nobody knew anything about it. So, um, you know, it, it sucked not being able to play that AAU season and it cut off some of the high school season and made it really uh, – made it weird and nobody knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I was fortunate enough to have a gym close by that I was able to get into um, all through the pandemic and uh, had some buddies of mine that we always would go to the gym and keep working and just hang out uh, – throughout it all. So I, I was very fortunate to have that and just be able to keep working on my game. I know that some places in the country obviously were a lot more strict than others in terms of protocols and what you could or could not do. When you looked at that summer, would you say that you still were able to put in pretty much the same amount of work you typically would do in a summer because of having access to that gym? Or how did that affect you in terms of your daily workouts or weekly workout schedule? No, I think I, I think I was able to work out probably more than I can now just because everything was shut down, you know, we didn't have school. So I could, I could go to the gym all throughout the day and nothing, I didn't have no, nothing else was open. So you didn't have anything else to do. So we just went to the gym and we just hang out and swim and do all that fun stuff. We look at the number aspect, then you come back and you have an incredible sophomore season. We'll talk about, then you obviously have your big breakout AU summer. Would you say that was in large part because of that, because you were able to have the extra work than probably a lot of guys were able to in other States would you say that was a big factor in having that breakout sophomore year for yourself? Yeah, I would say so. Just uh, lifting the weights that we lifted and growing up during the COVID. Um, and then, like you said, being able to finally get into the gym. As uh, fortunate as we were, some people weren't able to do that. So being able to stay in the gym and keep working, uh, I think it was a big advantage for me. Let's hop into then your first time you get back from COVID and it still was obviously present that season. As you said, it wasn't a typical high school year for yourself. So for starters, just having to go through a entire schedule where you didn't necessarily know, am I going to play today? Am I not? What's going to happen COVID wise? What was that sophomore year like? Yeah, it was, it was a really weird year. Um, you know, you like still nobody knew what was going to happen. It wasn't uh, fans weren't all able to come to the games referees were wearing masks, fans were wearing masks, coaches were wearing masks, you had to wear a mask. Mm. Um, so it was really it was really different. And you didn't know until like game time if you were even going to play a game. Uh, mm. Games got canceled because people were getting sick. And so it was a really weird season. But I was glad to be able to uh, play all the games that we played. And, you know, as it was different, but I was still very thankful to be able to play that amount of games. Were you guys having to wear a mask during practice and when you guys were playing games or were you guys able to take those off? No, we were able to take them off during practice and when we were playing, but uh, the coaches had to wear them when they would coach and when we would practice. That season, like I said, though, was a huge year for yourself. You averaged 30 points a game that year. When you were still capable of putting producing at that high of a level, what was that like? 
you know, that was that was a really fun time for me. Uh, I got a lot of confidence during that time. Uh, everything I was doing kind of felt really good. Uh, you know, I was thankful to have a good group of guys around me that allowed me to uh, shoot like shoot that many shots and get get some points for us. And then also they were they made it a lot easier if I drove in and kicked it out. They made a three so the defense would quit collapse and I could just go shoot a layup and they would get me open. And so I was very thankful to have those dudes around me being able to uh, help me get points. And then I would help them get points and open the floor up for us. Around this time is when you start to get a lot more, a bit larger spotlight on yourself as well as then we're talking about second day AU time as well. When you started getting people targeting you, really starting to realize, okay, this is Reed Shepard. He's a ranked player. He's this, that, and the third. He's going to have offers coming under his name. How did you deal with now having the spotlight and the tension now kind of zeroing in on yourself? Uh, you know, it was difficult at the beginning. You know, I was looking at everything, reading everything. And my high school coach was uh, really good about, he told me just go ahead and mute Twitter, mute Instagram, mute all the social media stuff and don't look at it. You know, he said, don't worry about what people think. And then mom and dad also were just saying, don't worry about it. Just continue to go be yourself. People are going to have negative things to say. Uh, no matter what you do, you can go out and have a perfect game and they're going to have something negative to say. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about anything they say. Just go out and keep doing what you've been doing. That was the other huge aspect. And as social media and as people have learned more and more, it obviously can be easily distracting for a lot of players. As you've blown up now on social media and had a much larger presence on there, how have you dealt with that aspect? Has that been difficult at all? Did you ever struggle and say, you know, okay, I have this follower that pay attention to all this and going on, on social media? How did you deal with that? Uh, just just by not trying to look at it all, you know, kind of muting, muting uh, notifications and just trying not to not to look at everything. Uh, people say and people send you and just try to block out everything and keep your circle really tight. You then head into that AU summer and this is the time that you really do blow up now. You get a lot of high major offers and you really do become the top five-star recruit that you are now. When you're preparing for that, did you expect to have that bigger breakout summer? Like, Was that what you expected for yourself, what you wanted to do, or what were you expecting heading into the last AU season? Uh, you know, I expected myself to go out and uh, have a good summer. Uh, I was playing up on the seven on 17 U, so I wasn't for sure how my body or like the how my size was going to do playing against older people. Yeah. Um, but going out and just being able to keep doing what I was doing and having fun with it, and we were we had a really good team that helped helped a lot, and I was able to play with them, and we had a really fun year together. Um, so it was a it was a really fun season for sure. You decided to play up that season. What motivated you and said, you know, I want to play up. I want to play up one year and go up against 17U. Uh, you just can get better that way. You know, it's always good to try to compete against older guys and learn from learn from mistakes that you make against them. And, and then next year, you know, now you play against dudes that you didn't have to play against last year. So now playing against these guys are is new. So uh, last year was a big, big deal for me getting used to like the physicality of it and the pace and uh the size for sure um so i was very blessed to be able to do that we got to get into your duo gabe because you two have become an electric dynamic duo both last season now this year as well when did you first get to know each other like was that something that formed all of a sudden last summer did that start a little before that or when did you and gabe first start to get to know each other uh we've kind of known each other our whole lives playing against each other mm -hmm. uh on the AAU circuit. And then uh, I think we went to a camp um, in Lexington, actually about eighth grade and our parents, uh, our dads talked and met. And then me and Gabe were on the same, same team. So we, uh, we talked and stayed close and touched that, that whole uh, weekend of camp. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, things just kind of clicked with us. We reached out and uh, our parents talked about playing with the same travel team. And we did that. Um, and then, then it's just kind of all been uphill from there. When would you say you two clicked on the court? Because you two, that anyone watched you guys, you guys have to play with a really high level of IQ together. You guys have a clear cut, strong chemistry with each other. When would you say you two clicked on the court? Um, I would say it didn't take us too many tournaments. I think we kind of figured each other out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for sure, the last summer was when we really, really clicked and become a good 
uh, backcourt duo um, as we just kept playing together for a while and uh, communicated with each other and became really good friends. And, uh, you know, that helps everything. So I'd say last summer we became a pretty good duo. If you remember through all the times you have been together now, what would you say has been your favorite memory that you've created with Gabe? Uh, it's got to be just off the court. You know, we have we have a really good time off the court. You know, we're roommates at all our AAU tournaments, and mm-hmm. uh, there's not many times on the weekend that one of us will go somewhere and the other one isn't right beside of us laughing. We're just always cutting jokes, and, you know, we always just have a good time together. And then when we get on the court, you know, it's a serious time and time to go win. And then after, of course, we'll – get back together and and start joking and having fun with each other. But, you know, off the court, we just have a good time and that that's pretty special. So did you two ever discuss teaming up in college together? And if so, how close did that ever get? (laughs) That one got pretty close. Uh, We actually went on a visit together to Indiana. um, And that one, we talked about that quite a bit, actually, is that's something we both wanted to do, um, but it just wasn't meant to be. But, you know, we did. We both talked about it for a little bit, and we both got pretty excited about it. If you two were to be a backcourt at the college level, how special do you think you two would have been? I think it would have been really, really special, actually. It would have been been a cool moment for both our families and for me and Gabe, for sure. So you two, if you guys do end up matching up at the college level, what would that game be like? Because I'm sure you two would probably be on each other as well in that game. What would that be like? Yeah, that would would be a really fun game. you know, that one, we would be chirping at each other during the game. Uh, and that one, that game would be really funny, actually. It would be a fun time. Um, you know, we wouldn't act like it during the game. But after the game, like I said with Caleb, you know, we would go cut up and go out, and eat some dinner and hang out with each other's families and stuff. Well, obviously, around this time is when you commit to Kentucky, which we'll come back to in a second. But I do want to go through this past season you've now had. You go through your junior year of high school and, you guys go 28 and six, but you grow to become a really solid all around player. You, don't, you drop down a little bit in points per game by a couple of points, but your rebounds go up, your assists go up, your steals go up. Becoming that all around player now, how much of a development did that take for you to do that? And just what was it kind of like seeing the way you developed into this new type of all around player now this season? Uh, you know, just, just keep going to the gym and work on, on everything. You know, don't go to the gym and just work on one thing. Um, but trying to become an all-around player, a better leader, mm-hmm. better passer, better rebounder, better defender um, was all part of the off-season plan, just becoming the all-around best player that I could be. Um, so we had a good good year this year. You know, we won, won the region championship for the first time in like 12 or so years for the high school. So being able to do that was a special moment with a special group of guys. Um, so we had a really good season. I have to imagine that a lot of the prep schools and stuff like that have reached out to you. Is going out and doing something like Caleb just did, obviously transferring out and playing a national scene for his final year, is that something that you're going to consider? Would that, is that an option on the table that you guys will talk about? Or is that something you've been planning for? Or how does, is that something you that's kind of on the table for yourself? No, I'm, I'm staying. I'm staying with my high school. You know, I got one year left. Mm-hmm. And these are my friends that I've always played with. Um, played with my whole life and being able to do it one more year is something I look forward to. That is a unique aspect. Cause like I said, a lot of guys do go out and want to play somewhere else knowing that you're going to create not just a four year legacy, but a five year legacy there. How big will that be for yourself? You know, it's, it'll be special. You know, I've grown up going to all the North games. My sister played at North um, going to all of her games, always being around my friends and now going to high school together so it'll be really special for sure and I think we left a this team left a pretty special mark on the school what are your goals then for your final high school year to know that you have one year on the table to achieve whatever it is like what would you say would be a successful final year of high school basketball for yourself well most part just go out and have fun you know it's your last year of high school basketball uh you're never going to get these days back and these are all these are going to be days you always remember you're going to remember playing with your best friends, mm-hmm. um, like going into college and stuff. They're going to be your friends, but they're not going to be like your lifelong friends that you've known forever. Um, and that's what these guys are. So we have one more year to do that. And of course we would like to win region and win state again and uh, win as many tournaments as we could, but just going out and having fun one last time with them. 
And the other final thing I'll wrap up before we get into Kentucky is you're in your final AU season now as well. And you and Gabe are obviously together as well. But you have bringing in Rayvon and a couple other pieces too. What's it been like being a part of this year? And just how much have you enjoyed their final AU season so far? Yeah, I mean, it's been a blast, you know. Uh, this AU season is kind of like I said, for high school, just go out and have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not having anything to prove now uh, to any of the coaches is a big stress reliever off. You can just go out and play and have fun your final year. And you're not going to get this moment back either. AAU is a special time with um, special people, and and you don't get to do it much. So this is my last year at it, so I'm just going to go out and have fun. Adding Rayvon into the group now, what's it been like playing alongside him, and and how great has he kind of been in terms of coming onto this group? Yeah, I mean, he's a great he's a great player. Uh, I like Rayvon a lot. You know, he's super athletic, as you've seen. Uh, great dude, great great teammate. So uh, having him on the team has helped us a lot and it's, it's been really, really fun. So what are your goals now for this final year? If you guys to go come away with either yourself as personal awards or something else different wise as a team, what would you say are the biggest goals for you and the team now in your final AU summer? Uh, you know, we would like to, we would like to win the three SSB uh, championship. So mm-hmm. I think if we did that, that would be a pretty cool end to the summer and end to our AU careers. But but just mainly looking forward to finishing out the uh, year with with my teammates and having fun with it and hopefully getting all them some good offers and being able to get committed somewhere good. So you look back now at your AU career and your high school career, what would you say has been your favorite high school memory that you've created and what's your favorite AU memory that you've created? Um, high school, I would have to say this year winning the region championship uh, was a really cool moment for the whole community, really. Uh, we had a lot of people that were behind us um, through it all, and they would come to all our games. And, you know, that was a really special moment for us and for the team. Um, that's something we have been wanting to do and work for all year. So being able to do that was was really special. Uh, and AAU, I would say uh, just the overall part of AAU, meeting new people, meeting new teammates, uh, just enjoying the whole process of meeting new people and, uh, being able to travel different places with my family and going and seeing some cool stuff, but at the same time playing basketball and learning a lot of stuff and talking to all these coaches and stuff. Well, let's get into Kentucky now this recruiting process because it obviously goes back a little bit in time, but you head back to last summer and springtime when you started blowing up. Who are the schools you seriously took, really like seriously considered then? Because we know you're going to Kentucky, but you want to visit the school like Virginia and Louisville as well. Who were really the schools that came down to for yourself? Like, who was really in the mix for yourself? And who did this process really come down to for you? Uh, It came down to about um, Indiana, Ohio State, Virginia, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, Those were kind of the top five Mm -hmm. that had reached out. Gonzaga reached out. um, Some West Coast schools. Um, But, you know, at the end of the day, it – it was it was really I was really thankful and grateful to be able to be in the opportunity that I was and be able to talk to as many coaches as I did and build relationships with them. I never like asking this question until guys do commit because a lot of time media, if they find out kids dream school, they also start promoting that a lot. But well, growing up, was Kentucky a dream school? Did you have a dream school growing up? And if so, who was it? Yeah, it, my, Kentucky was my dream school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, growing up, I've been from Kentucky. I'm just a little kid from Kentucky and always going to watching Kentucky play, watching them on TV, cheering for them, screaming in the living room for them. You know, that's something that you always wanted to do is put on a Kentucky jersey and run out in Rupp Arena in front of the best fans in the world is, is something that a lot of little kids want to do in Kentucky and a lot of little kids all around the world would like to do. July 9th is when that offer officially comes to you. What was your reaction when you found out that Kentucky offered you and you have now have a legitimate chance to go play at Kentucky? Yeah, I was shocked. Uh, I was actually in a hotel room with my mom and dad. Um, so that was a really cool moment for us mm-hmm. um, having that opportunity. And we were all kind of shocked and, and stunned a little bit that it, that we got, we got that offer just because of the fact that, it's the University of Kentucky. Not a lot of people get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And having that opportunity was a dream come true, and it was a blessing. Where on your list did Kentucky fall after that call? When you found out that they officially offered you, 
do you kind of move them up to number one and say, okay, this is the school that everyone has, has to beat now? Or where did you, where Kentucky kind of fall in your top schools at that point in time? So back in July. Uh, no, it, it moved up there, but it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was like up, up top, top. It was still mm-hmm. around like the, like one to three, just because of the fact that I wanted to, to be sure that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get to know the coaches really good and get to know the players, how they do things. Um, so I would say it didn't, it didn't just go automatically like, bam, that's Kentucky. You know, I still had to go through the recruiting process and uh, figure some stuff out. We touched up on your parents and their role on you a little bit earlier, but now that you are officially in the heavy mix of recruiting process now, how big were they for you in this? Just understanding the game of college basketball, the business side of it now to a certain extent, just knowing each kind of college and what they kind of bring. How big were they for you in this process? Uh, they were really, really big. Um, you know, they – they didn't force me to do anything, go anywhere, force anything on me. But if I had any questions or if they needed to tell me something that they thought would help me, they would say it and it always would help. And being able to have them by my side and ask the coaches questions when I went on visits and all that stuff, them knowing what to look for um, in the coaches and in the facilities and, and all that stuff was, was a big part of it. Um, but having them beside me was a, huge blessing and I was super pumped to have them with me we publicly know that you commit to Kentucky I believe November 20th when did you start feeling that Kentucky took the lead though like when at what point was it a couple days before that was it maybe a month before that or when did you feel Kentucky took the lead for yourself no it was a couple weeks before uh you know me and my dad were actually on the road coming back from a visit to a different school Mm -hmm. and after that visit I just it was just me and him in the car and I probably talked to him for like an hour straight about that I was just ready to commit and I felt like Kentucky was the one for me and um you know that's just what I felt like I felt like it was home and I felt the most comfortable there and that was I just wanted to make it happen if you Kentucky was never on the table for yourself so that wasn't a school you could have went to what school do you feel like you'd be committing to them uh I'm not sure you know I still had I still had some good options, really good options, like Virginia, Ohio State, Indiana, Louisville. Um, You know, those schools that all started coming in um, more into my mind. But I'm not I'm not really for sure. I would have still had to go through that process and check some boxes and all that stuff. I know you're also a believer. So how big was relying on God during that time span, kind of praying, asking for him for help? How big was kind of trusting in him during that process for you? Yeah, I mean, it was really big. You know, you, I always wanted to make sure that that's what I wanted to do. So just praying about it, asking him um, just what, what he, like, just what, just for like straight guidance on what I needed to do. And if that decision was the right decision for me. And, you know, that's the best person you can have with you. So you're in that car ride, you come to, come to the answer and conclusion that Kentucky's where you want to play at. Then you also have to make the call to Coach Cal and that coaching staff. So have that go down. Take us to the story of how you told Coach Cal that you're going to become a Wildcat and what his reaction was. Yeah, we actually drove up to to campus. You know, it's just a like an hour, hour 15 away from the house. So mm-hmm. we just texted him one day and asked him if he was going to be in, the, uh, in his office that we were just going to stop by. We were up in Lexington for a day or something, but we were just going up to tell him. I wanted to tell him in person. Mm-hmm. Um, so we walked in the office and, you know, he just asked me what I was doing here. And, and that's when I told him, I was like, coach, I want to play for you. I want to be a Kentucky Wildcat. And he just kind of sat there for a little bit and then he jumped up and started screaming and said, come here, give me a hug. Um, so, you know, that being able to do that and that was a really special moment for me, um, being able to tell him in person and being able to finally be a part of it. How long from the time you made the conclusion to when you told Coach Cal was that? Like, was you guys go up like the next day or something, or how far apart were they? No, it was probably like a week, a week mm-hmm. or so, a week or so in between. The big aspect is that you get to be a hometown hero now. You get to go represent the state that you've grown up and you've lived out your entire life. What does that mean to you to know that you get to kind of embrace and be that hometown hero for Kentucky now? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I think I can go in and. I think I can help the team just being an all-around player, not just being good at one thing. And, of course, being from Kentucky, um, I'm going to be excited to be there. I'm going to try to do everything that the coaches tell me to do. Um, You know, I'm all ears when I get up there. But 
right now, you know, I still have one year of high school left and just want to enjoy the rest of my high school career and try not to look too far ahead of anything. That's one thing I want to ask you because you obviously are a five-star recruit and you could potentially buy yourself. Obviously, I don't know how it works academic for yourself, but you talent wise could possibly be ready to play collegially next year. Is reclassing something you ever discussed with your family? Was it an opportunity for you or is that something that you decide all along that you're going to go in 2023? No. Yeah. We're just going to stick this one year out and mm-hmm. enjoy it with my friends and have fun. And we'll go up uh, in 2023 and, and have a good time those next couple of years. Over the next year or so, are there certain things that you want to work on that you're trying to improve on to get ready for campus? Or what, what would you say are some of the biggest things that you want to get you better at before you step foot on campus in a year? Uh, just like keep working on my overall game. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I want to get stronger and get some more, uh, get some more weight, weight on me so I can get ready physically for the collegiate level. But uh, just overall, just keep getting in the gym and working and becoming a leader and being more vocal. Uh, just some little key things that I'm working on. When you look at the 2023 recruiting class, you're the first commit so far. So who would you say you're trying to recruit? Are there any guys that you know that in 2023 that you'd like to come play alongside you? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really great players out there, uh, like DJ and his teammate Aaron, yep. um, you know, Montes, uh, and then you got Robert. Um, you know, there's a lot of Ron Holland. There's a lot of really good players out there that are being recruited uh, by Kentucky. And I would like for I'd like for all of them to come to Kentucky, you know. Uh, but whoever whoever comes, I think it'll be meant to be. And I think it'll be a fun time for sure. So let's say you guys pull into the dream class for you guys and you guys pull in yourself. You guys pull in Ron and Aaron and DJ, the Matas, the entire group right there. How special would that 2023 recruiting class be? Oh, I think it would be very special, you know. Of course, the talent's there, and I think uh, the coaches would, would get us to be in there and play together, of course, and mm-hmm. I think we would all get along off the court, and that would be a very special group. If I'm one of those guys and you're trying to recruit me or you're trying to tell me that like, Kentucky is the right place for them, what's your pitch? Tell me like how you'd break it down and what you'd tell a top recruit if I was Ron or Aaron or DJ or anything. Like, what's your pitch to me to try getting me to go to Kentucky? Well, the main thing is just it's, it's the University of Kentucky. You know, <laughs> there's not – there's not much to say about it. Everybody knows about it. And then, uh, you know, Coach Cal, the facilities, the the fan base, you know, you're always going to have support from the fan base. And, and Coach Cal does a great job of getting players from the collegiate level to the next level. Yep. Um, you know, he can always – he always – he knows people. He, he always does a great job with his players, and he knows how to win. I want to go into Coach Powell for yourself because you guys have had a form pre solid relationship, I can imagine. Just being around a coach of that legacy, knowing that you could be around Coach Cow and you've just been a part of this recruiting process now for about a year or so. How have you seen your relationship grow with Coach Cow from the first day you guys started talking to today? Well, the first time we ever talked, you know, I barely could talk. I was extremely nervous. Uh, you know, I, I told my parents, I was like, I still get nervous talking to him just because who he is. You know, he's one of the greatest coaches ever. and He's the coach at the University of Kentucky. And, um, you know, growing up, you always, like, looked up to him. And and because he was at Kentucky and such a good coach. Um, but, you know, our relationship has grown. Uh, it's gotten pretty – really strong. Um, you know, he reaches out quite a bit, and we talk on the phone and comes and watches the games, stays in touch with the fam- with the family and – so being able to do that has meant a lot to me, and it's, it's been a really fun process. What would you say is your favorite memory that you've created so far with Coach Cal? Um, probably that moment that I went up there and, and told him that I was committing, and he jumped up and gave me a hug and just said, welcome to the family, and all the other assistant coaches were there, and that was, that was a pretty special moment. So what is it like being around him off the court then? Because a lot of people get to see what he does on the court. We know how he coaches. We've seen that. And there might be some interviews here and there too, but you could experience him through a visit or just on the phone call, Zoom, whatever. What's his personality like off the court? Yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. You know, he's actually pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think he's a great guy. And he he can come off sometimes. Maybe he's a little a little harsh when he coaches and yells a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think you got to have that. and. You know, he's a really good dude. Um, 
and he's straightforward with it. He'll tell you some stuff that you need to work on and tell you what he likes about you and that he can, that he's ready to coach you and all this stuff. But, you know, I think he's a really great dude off the court and on the court, of course. Was there anything about him that shocked you? Like when you first were getting ready to talk to him the very first time and you like, you kind of had a certain image or picture of what coach Cal was going to be like, did any aspect about him shock you at all? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> what can you tell fans you're going to be bringing to Kentucky when you do step foot out there in a year? What do you bring into Kentucky? I'm just going to do everything I can. You know, I'm always going to play hard, mm -hmm. uh, do whatever I can for the team to help us win. I'm going to be an unselfish, humble uh, player. And, you know, I'm going to be from Kentucky. So I think that'll, that'll help some fans out a little bit, uh, <laughs> knowing that I'm from Kentucky right around the corner. Um, but just I'm going to go and just do whatever I can to help the team win and always uh, give it my best. Heading into the SEC, which is only getting better and better each year, and obviously Oklahoma and Texas are coming in soon too. Is there one team that you're the most excited for? If you go pick one team in the SEC that you want to play, who is that team and why? Oh, right now it would probably have to be Tennessee, just because the the rivalry between Tennessee right now is is pretty up there. Um, you know, I think the Tennessee fans are pretty crazy, and it's hard place to play is at the University of Tennessee. So uh, Tennessee would be a good one. But all the SEC schools are really good, and they all have uh, different environments, and their fans are all crazy. The gyms are nice. So it, they'll all be really fun games. I saw on Twitter there's a picture that you took with DeMarcus Cousins back in 2013. Take us to the backstory behind it. Like, what was the reasoning behind that, how that get set up, and just what was the meaning behind that picture? Yeah, so Dad used to do these camps with some former uh, – former Kentucky players and did some games with some former Kentucky players and former non-Kentucky players. And, you know, I would just always travel to those with dad and I would always be with all the, all the Kentucky players. And so they were all really nice to me. So that was, that was pretty cool for me being able to be there with them and be a part of that. Who would you say is your favorite or maybe the funniest the former Kentucky player that you've been able to be around? Uh, uh, probably Josh Harrelson. Mm -hmm. He was always really good to me, and uh, I enjoyed being around him. We also know that you rock number three. Is that the number you plan on still rocking in Kentucky? And at the same time, too, like, what's the meaning behind why you love rocking number three? Uh, I hope I would hope to keep wearing it at Kentucky, but you know that's not that big of a deal to me. If I can't, um, I'll be fine wearing whatever whatever jersey number. Um, but why I chose number three, you know, I really don't have like a certain thing mm -hmm. on why I wore number three. But uh, once I got a little older and I was wearing number three, you know, I was always thinking like, you know, Rex Chapman wore number three. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Paul, I like Chris Paul. He's my favorite player. Um, he wears number three. And my dad also wore number three in high school. Um, so having those when I got older and realizing that I was number three, uh, <laughs> looking at those options are like, you know, that's that kind of makes sense for me. NIL is another huge aspect to college basketball. What was Kentucky's pitch for that? Like how big of a factor did they have, if any, in your recruiting process? Yeah, I mean, obviously they talked about it and mm -hmm. showed me some stuff that could happen um, with the NIL stuff. But, you know, for the whole recruiting process, that was – the NIL was just coming out. So, you know, you didn't know a whole lot about it. And um, – but, no, for my recruiting, it wasn't – that wasn't a part of it. You know, after I made my decision – then I started looking into it and was like, okay, this is, this is what can happen. This can, this can help me out a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But during the recruiting process, I didn't want to make that a big thing at all. I wanted to just make sure it felt like home and felt like where I needed to be. These don't have to be realistic for yourself, but if you had to pick one company or that be a shoe company, a clothing brand, a car company, whatever it is that you could get sponsored by, who would be your dream sponsorship? Uh, I would like to get sponsored by like Ford so I could get like a real nice Bronco. I like the Broncos. Absolutely, man. Well, I know that all guys do want to be remembered for something by the time they leave their career. So when you do leave Kentucky, what do you want to be remembered for, for what you achieve both on and off the court there? Well, hopefully being able to go and win a national championship. Um, mm -hmm. But off the court, you know, just being a good person, you know, always being there with the fans and interacting with the fans and, you know, always having people say good things about me, just being a 
a really nice dude to them and just being yourself and just somebody that goes out and plays hard and has fun. There's a few things I want to wrap up touching up on. And one of them is in your Twitter, you have pinned, hey, my haters live long enough to see my success. Take us to that a little bit. Like, what's the meaning behind that? Why do you have that pinned on Twitter? Uh, I put that on there, I think, around uh, 2019, maybe. Mm. Uh, you know, that was kind of when I finally – I first started getting getting noticed a lot and people were um, – people were all starting to chirp in and have something to say. And that, that kind of just stuck with me, knowing, like, they're always going to be haters. Um, but you can you can just keep doing what you do and block them out. Uh, you can go be successful and and they'll end up and they'll watch and they'll see you succeed one day, even though they uh, they weren't much pulling for you and they didn't much believe in you. But you just keep doing what you do and they'll they'll see that. We touched up also on your faith aspect a second ago, but right about that pin tweet is something you have in your Twitter header. And that is you have a picture up there that says chase God and blessings will chase you. What was the meaning behind that aspect? And because kind of take us to that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think if you have God on your side, you're winning. You know, that's that's the number one goal in life is always always have him on your side, always uh, have him with you everywhere you go. And, you know, he's going to he has your life planned out for you. So you just you just keep trusting in God to do and you do what you do with him. Pray and um and you know he's he's got your life planned out for you, and he's gonna he's gonna set your life up. As a believer, too, I know a lot of players out there might be believers, and not all will be vocal about their faith. What's led you to say, you know, I'm willing and I want to be able to spread God's word. I want to be able to put him on social media. I want to I want it to be known that I am a believer. What's led you to be the outspoken much of faith? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, I've always been to church. Uh, my family's big um, church people, and. And, you know, always going to church and, you know, just knowing, like I said earlier, you have him on your side, you want, yeah. you know, that's what you always want to do is have him on your side and, uh, you know, just, just going about it that way. I think you, you're going to be successful, you know, have him on your side. Um, and that's all you can ask for. When did you really start putting your faith in God? Like, was there a certain point you remember that, okay. I know you probably might have grown up in a Christian household, but that became that point where you formed that one, that kind of personal one-on-one relationship with him. When would you say that was for yourself? Uh, it was probably like the middle of middle school going into high school, really, when I finally realized, like, you know, growing up, you go to church when you're a little kid, but you might not always know know everything or know what you're doing. Um, but when you realize, when I realized that, you know, that's when I was like, All right, I need to get my relationship straight and just uh trust in him and talk with him so where would you say is the biggest moment that you've now seen god show up in your life uh just helping me get through get through tough times you know always like just calming down you can talk to him about it pray about it uh but just like getting through tough times and uh like knowing if something bad happens that it's for a reason and don't need to freak out or anything that it's everything happens for a reason. My final question for you, give Kentucky fans your three biggest goals that you have set for your Kentucky career. Win a national championship. Mm -hmm. mm, let's see. For sure. Win a national championship. I'm going to say just be being who I am uh, off the court, like interacting with the fans. Mm -hmm and uh just having a good time just being a good time being one of those dudes that you can look at and you know get get positive energy off of them and some good vibes off of them absolutely man well re congratulations once again on commitment i'm excited to see what god's got next for you man throughout your career at kentucky and obviously the rest of your high school career keeping the light man i appreciate you taking time to come on today yes sir thank you for having me of course you're welcome on man god bless yes sir